Today I'm going to be doing a shave with PAA's gondolier and my above the tie H1 razor. We'll be announcing the 500 subscriber giveaway winner and I wanted to do a little bit of a chat about Afterpay. So I wanted to start today by saying thank you to Matt Fox. So Matt just became my latest Patreon supporter. Um, I've interacted with Matt quite a bit on some Facebook groups, particularly the Phoenix Shaving Fan Club group that uh, was created by James Bayer. Uh, so Matt's a great guy and love his contributions to the community. So thank you very much for choosing to support my channel here. Thanks, Matt. So the gear I'm gonna be using today, uh, I'm gonna be starting with some PAA Prickly Pear uh, Star Jelly Pre-Shave. I've uh, been using this for a couple weeks. I actually really like it. Then I'm going to be using PAA's Gondolier. So this is, got my puck blooming here. This is one of the few soaps that I still tub load. Um, I just find it works better with, this is the CK1 formula. For some reason, I just think it works better. Um, the scent on this is really nice. It's kind of a masculine, fresh cologne. I've heard a lot of people say that this is actually a scent that's reminiscent of Mont Blanc Legend or Abercrombie Fierce. I've never tried either one of those, but I can tell you that Douglas will assure you that this was not directly based on either one of those. This was his own scent creation, um, but it does evidently share some similarities if you ask other people. So this is one of my first PAA soaps that I ever bought and one of my favorite scents from them. It's also one of my wife's favorites. So this week is BBS Live's family themed week, and my wife actually picked this soap out for me for this week. So if you guys have actually used Gondolier and you love this scent as much as I do, hit that like button below. Let me know that you really enjoy Gondolier as much as I do. So my brush today is my Heritage Collection Adoration replica brush. So this is a really cool brush. It's got that clear handle. Um, the knot I picked is a Smiles for Miles black and red synthetic that I just thought went really well with that ferrule and the red writing. So pretty cool brush. Uh, this particular knot has a lot of backbone, uh, probably a little bit more than I'd prefer if I'm being honest, um, but it's, it's still a nice soft synthetic. It just has a ton of backbone. And then the razor I'll be using today is my Above the Tie Atlas. Uh, this has the H1, the standard H1 head. So this is the original design before they came out with the Windsor line. This does have slightly exposed blade tabs, whereas the Windsor line covers them. And it has the sh shorter Atlas handle. I think they make the Atlas handle in the longer, like three and a half inch now. Uh, this is the one that's closer to three inches. So above the tie actually doesn't make this particular razor head anymore. So they, they went to the Windsor line, and I think they do still have some of the Windsor SSH1 uh, razors in stock, but I don't think they're gonna continue offering those. I think they're moving to the SSRH would be the next closest one to this particular efficiency level. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip up my lather, get ready to shave, and we'll come back in a minute and do the shave and eventually announce the giveaway winner. All right, so we got lather whipped up in my Captain's Choice copper bowl. So nice sheen on the lather, well hydrated. Um, I do prefer the CK6 formula, um, mainly because for me and the way I lather and my water, um, my, my CK1 lather ends up just a little bit more airy than the CK6 does, and so I find I actually prefer the structure that the CK6 formula gives me better, uh, but the CK1 is still a very good soap. Another thing I wanted to mention was I just noticed the other day, Above the Tie actually carries quite a few of the Captain's Choice products, including the Copper Bowls, um, and I have an Above the Tie discount code. So if you guys are interested in picking up any Captain's Choice products, including the Copper Bowl, um, use that code in my description and you can save yourself a bit of cash. Um, I, I do get some minor affiliate cuts from that, but um, I, you know, I'm sharing it with you guys because I'm able to give you guys a discount if you're already planning on spending the money. All right, let's go ahead and get the lather going. So I 
wanted to talk today a little bit about Afterpay. So it's something that's become popular not just in the shaving community, but it's fairly new, I think, to the shaving community. And there's quite a few vendors that are starting to use it. And so I just wanted to talk about my thoughts a little bit. Um, if you have used Afterpay, um, particularly on any of the shaving vendor sites, but in general, leave me some comments below. Let me know um, how your experience was, why you chose to use Afterpay, and how it went. I'm curious to hear from all you guys. But while I'm waiting to hear from you guys, I figured I'd just kind of give you some of my own thoughts. So for those of you that don't know, um, Afterpay is one of a number of different buy now, pay later services that have become very, very popular, particularly for online purchasing. So the idea is that instead of paying full price up front for something, you can make a handful of payments over, I think it's a six week period, to pay off your purchase which kind of sounds like a cool idea, right? Especially if you're talking about something like a high-end razor that might be costing you 150 bucks, 200 bucks, or in some cases, even more than that. You know, if you're looking at uh, like an ambassador or something. So the idea seems appealing at first, but I wanted to talk to you guys um, basically to tell you something that you already know, but you probably don't want to hear. Let's go ahead and start with the shave first. Um, so I've got a second use Permasharp Super in this razor, and this particular blade is making me wonder why I buy anything else. Um, the more I think I like blades, and then I'll buy a hundred or two hundred of them, and I'll use them for a while, and realize I don't like them as much as the Permasharp Super. So I'm not sure why I buy anything else. This is by far my favorite blade. So back to Afterpay. So my opinion, if, if you can't afford to pay for an item in full when you buy it, you can't afford to pay for it, period. So I know a lot of guys will argue that, well, I know, but I get another paycheck in two weeks, and I get another paycheck two weeks after that, so I will be able to afford it. So my rebuttal is, if you can afford to make payments over a six-week period, then you can afford to wait six weeks to buy something. It's not that long. If Afterpay was a service that lets you stretch something over months, then I could see a bigger argument for it. But the fact that it's only stretching things out a few weeks just means that you get to experience the pain longer. Because if you don't have the cash up front, then it's going to be hard to come up with the payments over a six week period as well. So don't let FOMO or fear of missing out, for those of you who don't know what FOMO is, don't let that sucker you into buying something that you know you can't afford. I want you guys to be able to enjoy your shaving products. These are, for the most part, things like these razors or, you know, the brand new soap and aftershave splash. They're luxury items. There's no reason why you can't wait until you've saved up the cash to buy them. Now I know there's a lot of seasonal drops and special drops that everybody's afraid to miss out on. It's not that big of a deal. It's certainly not worth exposing yourself to the risk that comes 
with missing a payment and the penalties that you'll incur because of that. All right, we're gonna get lathered up for the second pass here. So as the shaving disciple, I would like to propose a better way so I, as the Shaving Disciple, believe very, very strongly in the wisdom of Biblical money management. So what that means from a practical perspective is very, very simple. So I love the way my current pastor puts it. Give, save, live in that order. Which means, when it comes to spending money on shaving stuff, I'm going to use the B word, which nobody likes, budget. And I understand why nobody likes it. It implies restrictive rules. So call it a spending plan if you'd like. That's really what it is. That's much better. So set a spending plan for your shaving stuff. So I do that. So in my household, our household spending plan includes number one, giving. So we give a percentage off the top before we've done anything else with our money. Number two, saving. So we take money and we set it aside for the future. Some of that money is long-term for retirement. Some of that money is for future projects or vacations or whatever that we're saving up for. And then we live on the rest. So part of the rest for us includes, for each my wife and I, we both allocate to ourselves a certain amount of fun money. And out of my fun money, I treat it just like I do my household budget. I take that fun money, I give some. So I am automatically set aside money off the top for these giveaways that I do on my channel or I occasionally do PIFs, pay it forward for those of you who don't know that acronym, um, or gifting of shaving products on the groups or occasionally to my Patreon uh, supporters and I save second. So out of that allocated shaving budget portion of it goes into saving for things. So sometimes that's for a nice razor that I'm saving up for, which is how I saved up for my Rex Ambassador that you see behind me. It's how I saved up for my copper double open comb that you see behind me. Um, I set aside a portion <clears throat> for saving. Now the other thing I do with that money that I save is I try to keep some available for these special drops that happen occasionally. So when, when the Warrior Soap came out or the Never Alone set that just recently released, I had the cash set aside from previous months of saving ready and available to go towards those special things that had just been released. And then the rest of my shaving budget, I get to do with as I please. So, sometimes that goes towards the YouTube channel and buying microphones or lighting. Sometimes that goes towards an occasional soap that I've had my eye on. Um, I've got an unboxing coming later, so um, that was money that I had set aside for a couple of months. Um, again, that was kind of the saving bucket, but it was my spending fund money. And then some of it has been going towards the... Uh, I'm planning on doing an Aventus project similar to the Green Irish Tweed reviews that I did last year. So some of my spending goes towards that. But it always starts with giving and saving. Those are the two first line items. I think I actually caught my neck there a little bit, which doesn't happen very often with this razor, but every once in a while. So I want to encourage you guys that you can do the same thing. 
I don't want you to not be able to enjoy these cool traditional shaving things that you buy as a part of this hobby because in the back of your mind you subconsciously regret having spent the money that you didn't have to spend or the next payment that's coming up that you have to hit in a couple of weeks before you get your next paycheck through something like an afterpay. So try it. Try it for three months. Set aside a spending plan for your shaving hobby and within that set saving plan, give, save, spend. Do it for three months. Just try it. See how it feels. All right, so that's the end of my shave. I only do a couple of passes on my face. I'm going to do a quick rinse in the shower, and then I'll come back for post-shave, and we'll announce the 500 subscriber giveaway winner. All right, so finished up with a shower, and nice shave. Everything's nice and smooth. No real irritation. I did kind of catch myself a little bit on my neck, but uh, no bleeding. So just a little discomfort in one little area there. Um, finished up with my gondolier aftershave cologne and the gondolier uh, star jelly. This is the menthol free. This is one of the ones they started offering in menthol free, which I appreciate because I don't like menthol very much and I love the star jellies. All right. So the moment you've all been waiting for, who is the winner of my 500 subscriber giveaway? So if you guys didn't know, I was running a 500 subscriber giveaway. Thank you so much to all my subscribers again. I appreciate you all watching. And the winner of that giveaway is James D, which is awesome because I actually gave James a shout out on the giveaway video. Um, thanking him for he reached out to me sent me some samples um, he's somebody that's been very very active in my comments so really really appreciate James um, I'm so glad that somebody who's been around the channel for a long time won don't get me wrong I love you new guys but it's nice to see it's nice to see the longtime supporters get rewarded so James um, I actually have your email address so you might have already heard from me by the time this video airs. If not, go ahead and shoot me an email at tsd at gwsmallwood.com and I will get your gift certificate code to you. So thank you again to everybody for watching. I hope you guys have a fantastic week and I'll see you in the next video.